the answer to this. You're supposed to read it out loud. What's one experience you wish I never had? Mm. I mean, you know. Yeah. that like I truly don't remember this or like you really telling me but that experience where you were in high school right yeah and having somebody do that to you I would want to take that away Because nobody deserves that, especially not my best friend. Anytime I think about that, especially now that you're my fiance, like in my head, it's drilled in, like I need to protect you by any means necessary. You know, mama and papa, of course, weren't educated enough to know that, to know what kind of help I needed after something like that happened. So. I took that as like, okay, I need to shut up and be quiet and forget that it ever happened. When we first started dating, it was really hard for me to grasp and to think about. I still feel anger about it, even though it's not my experience. It still makes me angry that you had to deal with that and sad. I didn't know how to ask that from you because I don't want you to, I don't want you to relive that. Yeah. So I've always been very hesitant to ask. Yeah. I mean, basically, our pleasure of, of sex that we have a right to was stripped from mm -hmm. us. So it takes time, I think, to regain what is rightfully ours, because it was taken away, you know? You're in a position as a survivor where you're trying to get someone, you're trying to convince someone that you're telling the truth. Yeah, which is, I mean, that's the worst. That's the worst. I lost friend in, in, in friends in, in high school mm. because they were like, what? This is what guys do, you know? Yeah. I'm like, I feel sorry for you. N now I mm. can say it, that this is what you think. Mm. They asked me if anything happened to me and I lied because I just, I don't know, I didn't want to deal with it. So I kept that pretty internal for a very long time until seven years of therapy, like finally made it okay to talk about it and not cry. And I think I, I didn't really tell anybody, you know? And it's still just like, a really difficult thing that I'm trying to process and unpack. Like there's a huge block with pleasure in general and pleasure of life, like genuinely enjoying life and then physical pleasure. I, it changed me. I think when something like that happens to you, you lose part of your of your innocence and your, like, your childhood. You know, I wonder, like, who I could have been if that didn't happen to me. I know I put on a very confident man, but inside there's a hurt child. Yeah, I think sharing everyone's story and, and accepting it for what it was and saying, oh, whoa, that was like sexual assault. <laughs> I would want to take that away from you. And that was like, like technically rape. Like, yeah. It took me a while to realize that it was that word that was defining my story and also that that's what it was because at first you're like that doesn't happen to me you know yeah. you always think it, ha it happens to other people it doesn't happen to me and then it happens yeah. to you and like 
Yeah. This is impossible. I can't. Yeah. Well, if it was something I did or what I say or was I too pretty or why did I have to wear like a stuffed bra? And I think that had I not kept those hurts inside and let them fester for a song, maybe the path would have been differently. Like, why me? Screw this. I can't, like, I'm so angry and so hurt and so frustrated with the entire world and... This is a difficult question. And the reason I find it difficult is because you wouldn't be where you are right now doing exactly what you're doing, who you are with the understanding you have affecting the people around you as you do without living your life exactly as it was lived up until this moment. There's no part of me that wants to say I'm grateful for it, but I am really grateful for how you handle yourself and how you have like been through that process. I feel like even though you're really vulnerable, you're so strong in the way you talk about it. But you give such hope mm -hmm. when you speak because of what you've been through and how you've dealt with it, because not everybody deals with it the way you do. I don't think any, any two people deal with it the same. No. Someone else will in my life. That's how I see it, right? It's someone else ruined my life, but I'm not going to let this actually ruin my life because we don't deserve it. <laughs> Either I can be a victim or I can be a survivor. So I want to be a survivor. And I don't want this person to rule how I live my life. And not to be like super silver linings rah rah, but it is one of the reasons why I am the person I am. And I really like the person I am. Most of the time. <laughs> and it, I do, I feel really conflicted in myself right now. I feel very conflicted about what I'm saying because of course I wish these things had never happened to you and all the painful things haven't happened, but also that's how we've grown into these amazing women that we're becoming, you know. We don't get to choose our wounds in life. Mm. Some people have it even worse and you're fucking brave for being here. In some ways I'm really grateful to have come out on the other side and have the perspective that I have and have this experience that really, I think, gives me a lot of empathy for what it means to be a woman mm. in the world today. But you're right, it's a part of me. Yeah. And what happened with is a part of me. And the process of going through the trial is, is a, a part, part of, of me. me. It's all a part of me. Yeah. And I'm awesome. So. You're awesome. It's a really, it's a good way of looking at it. Thank you. Abuse is never okay, but it's okay to talk about it.